Okay, so we're going to start here with something called the detrompe, which is just the the mixed dough for the puff pastry before we roll the butter in. So before you get started, uh, measure out everything that you're going to need, all the ingredients for the detrompe. And uh, for accuracy, just use a digital scale like this here. It's very important. Make sure that uh, if you're if you're going to make the puff pastry, use an 82% butter fat butter. This is one that you can get these days at, at your grocery store. At least in my area, you can. Really good, and it's the uh, it's a little higher butter fat reason why that's important is because if you just use the the cheap butter that's loaded down with a lot more water and that's going to cause your puff pastry to really blow up in the oven but then and it'll you'll get a great rise on it but then it'll start to collapse on you so use the good butter on that I'm gonna in the detrompe I'm gonna use uh, 60 grams here and make sure it's soft but not melted. So just set that to the side. Then you're going to want uh, 400 grams of some good organic uh, AP flour here just all-purpose flour that's the flour I'm using for this and uh, I suggest using the organic I think that's better for you so stick that to the side you're going to want 180 grams of filtered room temperature water have 12 grams of plain sea salt here and then just um, three grams of plain old white distilled vinegar and I'll, I'll explain that then so just get all that ready and then we're going to mix this together okay so we're just going to mix this detrompe by hand very simple you don't need a lot of special skills to do this we're just going to do this old school European method by hand so just it helps to work on marble too if you have the option marble is a good choice for this and this should make up this recipe that I'm going to give down in the description box below should make around a two pound batch or so of uh, finished puff so just pour out your all-purpose flour there it's 400 grams and make a well in the center kind of like if you were making pasta then just take your water and pour it into a bowl there add the vinegar now the reason why I'm adding the white distilled vinegar into this puff dough is number one it will uh, it will extend your shelf life of how long your puff dough will be workable and usable and it also stops the dough from going gray so it will maintain a nice color for you stay fresher longer so just the vinegar, water, 12 grams of sea salt, and just mix that together there, like that, until the salt dissolves and you don't feel any of its crystals in there. Just dissolve that. Now I'm going to place the butter in there as well soft but not melted and that's 60 grams of the butter so then just put the water right there in the center of the well and 
now just slowly get one hand wet there, trying not to let the water escape. So I'm just going to work this dough until it becomes a shaggy mass. You're not looking for uh, anything smooth or you're not you're trying not to work the gluten into this. Just work it on the marble until it all comes together into a rough mass. As soon as that comes together and you're not really seeing any big chunks of butter or dry spots of flour, just roll that into a disc here and we're going to wrap this and put it in the refrigerator for at least an hour or so. Just take a paring knife, a sharp knife, and cut an X in that fairly deeply <clears throat> and what that does is it, it cuts the gluten strands so it, it's, it takes longer for gluten to start to develop in there you don't want this getting tough so give it a, a deep scoring and then wrap it nice and tight and we'll come back to this in an hour so while your detromp is chilling in the refrigerator for an hour, now we're going to make the butter block. And the easiest, I think the best way to do this, um, get, yourself, get yourself 340 grams of that 82% butter. And what you want is you want this still sort of chilly, but not you know you want it soft and pliable so you could just put it in a in a bowl like this and sort of work it with a rubber spatula for a while and just kind of make it like about like that consistency sort of like you could say like stiff frosting but not <clears throat> not melting at all Then the next thing you want to do is get yourself a either a, a, a full piece of parchment. You can do this with a half sheet. It's easier with a full sheet, but you can also use a large piece of plastic wrap or maybe even wax paper, but you need something. It's easiest to have something like this. And on the one side of it, just mark off a 9 by 7 inch rectangle and then turn it over and fold it on all seams so that you have something like that. Then in the very center of that rectangle just start to put in your butter. You want to get every gram of this butter. Try to spread it out a little bit, not going outside the lines of that. You want this to be as even as you can. And then fold up all sides of this, just like this. So then once you have that folded up into a neat little package like that, then flip, flip this package over here. And you can either spread it out evenly with your hands. If it's the right consistency, you probably can just do it with your hands. But if it's still a little cold, just take a 
pin and gently work that butter block into a nice evenly even you want this an even width the whole way through it's important to do that so just you might have to work at it for a little bit till till everything till all the corners are filled but So then once you have this as even as you can all around, then just stick this in the refrigerator for a while to cool this down again, maybe uh, 15 or 20 minutes before you get ready to roll this butter block into the detrompe. Okay, so now we're going to roll this butter block into the detrompe. And it's very important that you've given your dough and the butter enough time to get down to refrigerator temperature. This actually took about an hour and a half for me to get to about 42 degrees, 40 degrees. So you want to make sure that it's cold already when you start to work this. Now don't be tempted to put this in the freezer, however, because what will happen is when you roll this into your dough, it's going the butter will shatter. So you want this to be cold, but refrigeration, not don't put it in the freezer. So just put your butter to the side for a minute and what I'm going to do here is just take some of that flour and lightly dust this. And now it's, it's January still here in central Pennsylvania so I'm not too worried about working this puff dough. However, if it's the middle of summer where you are and it's really hot, you want to make sure that, you're, that you've got your kitchen air conditioned. You, you don't want to even try. Well, I, I would say, you know, I, I rarely make puff dough in the summertime if I don't have to, but you can do it. Just try to make sure that your, that your, your room temperature is down below 70 degrees if possible. So now the goal is, what we're going to try to do is roll this out into a 18 by seven and a half, eight inch rectangle. You can smack it down here. You can use your bench knife to square things up, makes it a little easier. Sorry, I know the, uh, the camera is shaking a little bit here, but... So now if it does start to stick or if it gets too warm, don't be afraid to put this back in the refrigerator for five minutes. You don't want anything sticking to your work surface. That's why I like working puff dough on marble so it doesn't stick as bad. But at the same time, you don't want to go working a whole lot of flour into this either, or it'll get tough on you. Okay, so once you get your detrompe here worked out to just slightly, you want to go maybe slightly more than 18 here, 18 inches. So what I have here is just about 18 and the 
width is a little better than seven and a half, so we should be good with that. And so now you can unwrap your butter block. And it should be roughly the same texture as you. So now put the butter block one side or the other off to the side there. And all you're trying to do is just seal in all that butter. Try to get all your corners as straight as you can and get this completely enveloped in there, you can say. And push down on all of your seams. So we're going to give this the first of six single turns or what I call letters. Some chefs like to do it with two or three books where you're you're giving it a four-way turn. I'm just going to give this six single turns. So again it's very important that you're that you're being careful not to let this dough stick as you're rolling it out so but dust very very lightly not handfuls of flour but. and now just rolling in one rolling in one direction you're just going to Roll this back out to an 18 by 8 or so, 18 8 by 8 and a half inch or something like that. Again, trying to always square up your angles. You want to keep this dough. in a rectangle shape. So square up your corners as you're working. So now I've rolled this back out to roughly 18 by, it's almost 9 inches, so it's twice as long as it is the width. So now all you're going to do is make a simple business letter out of this. Make sure it's a nice squared up rectangle again. And now just wrap this tightly and give it about a half an hour rest before we do the next turn. Okay, so we're going to give this the second turn now. As I said, we're going to be doing this a total of six times. And in the classic French tradition, I'm going to do four turns today, and then we're going to rest it overnight for the, then complete the <clears throat> fifth and sixth letter turn tomorrow. Now, one thing I forgot is um, a lot of French pastry chefs like to use a finger to dot how many turns so they can keep track. So I forgot to put the one finger indent in there. So that that marking just means how many turns this has been given. So now we're going to do the second 
turn here, this very light dusting. And we're going to do this exactly the same way every time. So invariably, you're always going to see, <laughs> no matter how cold your room is, some of the of the butter may poke through. Just give that a little extra flour, and so just roll the dough a little bit at a time, and then check to make sure it's not sticking underneath. So then once you get your dough, dough rolled back out to 18 by 8, 18 by 8 and a half, then you're just going to give it your second turn here. Wrap this up again. Put this back on the sheet tray to keep it nice and flat, and then give that two dots. Okay, time for that third turn. Roll this back out 18 by 8. So there we have it. That's six single folds, or what I call a letter fold. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's great, you have puff dough, but what's it good for? So, well, in the, the uh, puff dough is very versatile and useful in both the world of pastry and the culinary world as well. You can make apple turnovers out of this, makes beautiful pie and tart shells and fruit galettes, makes a, a, many different types of French pastries, uh, palmiers, I'm not saying it correctly, I already know that, um, otherwise known as elephant ears, uh, that's a pastry. Or in the culinary world, this is very useful, uh, you can wrap up your beef wellington, with paste with puff pastry you could make chicken pot pies and other types of pies uh, meat pies with it so it's very versatile there's lots of things you can do with this dough it is definitely the absolute flakiest dough in the entire world of patisserie so but my absolute favorite all-time French pastry to make with this is a pastry called Milfoy, or Thousand Sheets, I think is what that means in, or no, a Thousand Leaves is what that means in French. Um, definitely not pronouncing it correctly, but I, I pronounce it Milfoy. Um, otherwise known, a lot of people know that as uh, Napoleon's, or Vanilla Slice, you may have heard it called. So that's what we're going to do with this pastry dough here, and I'm going to try to post this video uh, separately from the video. So I plan on posting uh, the instruction on how to make the puff pastry dough for the milk away first and then right after that I'm going to try to post the video for milk away pastry next so stay tuned for that and I will catch you guys next time thanks for watching